Coming out of our month of backpack gun content, we're gonna take this month and continue that topic, but instead of talking about the bags that we carry our gear in, we're gonna be talking about a few of the select builds that I featured in the content that you guys all saw last month. And today on the table, I have my five inch 300 blackout. And the way these videos are gonna go is I'm gonna talk about it front to back, we're gonna cover the specs of this build. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I built it the way that I did. And I would say that this is probably one of my more controversial builds in the entire lineup. There's a lot of people that think that five inch 300 blackouts are not capable. There's a lot of people that will wrongly suggest that reliability and cycling and functioning will not be as good with a super micro five inch 300 blackout. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end. For now, let's dive into the specs. So starting out with the upper receiver, this is a Veritas Tactical 5-inch 300 blackout upper. It has their quad rail and the barrel on the Veritas Tactical 5-inch 300 blackout is extremely heavy and the gas block is also a special proprietary size and the gas system is a proprietary length to accommodate that 5-inch 300 blackout barrel. On the end here, we have an ASR flash hider from Silencer Co. Up top, we've got a Surefire X300V. This is a light that you typically see on pistol lights, but it is a white light and infrared light. And I want all of my guns to be night vision capable. That allows me to do a lot of passive aiming under nods. Moving back a little bit, we've got a Neomag sentry strap. And that sentry strap is just a magnetic strap that allows me to hold my sling in place. So when I'm carrying this inside of a backpack, I don't have it all tangled up when I pull it out and draw it. I don't have issues with anything getting into the trigger guard or anything like that. Going back to the optic, this is a Vortex Spark Solar Red Dot Optic. It is on a lower third mount. And this is a nice budget optic. It works really well. It's extremely lightweight. I like how it performs. It's nothing crazy, but if you want my full opinion on it, we've done videos in the past on our other channel, TA Targets. You can check those out as well. We'll put a link down in the description. As far as magazine, inside the bag, I tend to carry with a 20 round mag, and that's just due to space. I don't really want a 30 round mag. It also adds a lot of weight when you're running those 30 round mags. So 20 round Lancer mags are really good. I had a lot of good luck with that. As far as the lower receiver, this is a Poverty Pony lower receiver. It is an Anderson, if you didn't catch my drift there. Just a simple mag pull grip, standard charging handle, no bad lever on this but I do have the pad bolt catch release from Geisley, and that's just a little bit bigger, a little easier to get your hands on when you're dropping the bolt home. On all of my bag guns, if they did not already come with a folder, you will notice that I have a Law Tactical folding adapter. I find that this is the most reliable way to get a folder on an AR-15 style platform. Moving back, we've got just a plain Jane BCM stock, nothing fancy, but because this rail is so short, I actually have two sentry straps, one on the buffer tube, one up here on the rail, and I fold my sling accordingly so that it all fits nice and snug. Other than that, it is a Geisley SD3G trigger, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this trigger is a little bit light for my liking. When we're talking about a five inch 300 blackout, I know a lot of you are probably questioning, is it potent enough? Is it accurate enough? Is it reliable enough? We're talking about reliability. This gun, unsuppressed, will shoot subsonic or supersonic ammo, does not matter. With the suppressor on, same thing. Subsonic, supersonic ammo, does not care in the least. We're talking about potency. I have this barrel chronographed with my 130 grain spear varmint ammunition. It is 1600 feet per second out of the muzzle. When you compare that to your 115 grain nine millimeter, it is much more potent than a nine millimeter, more potent than a 40 caliber, more potent than a 10 millimeter. And at the end of the day, I have this really, really tiny compact rifle that fits in a transit sling. If you don't know that bag, check out our transit sling video to see how tiny that bag actually is. But I can deploy this rifle and I have a very accurate, very capable build that is just a little bit more comforting knowing that I have it on tap in certain areas versus just having a concealed handgun. At the end of the day, even though I'm carrying a bag with a five inch 300 blackout, I can also still carry my Glock 19 as a primary. And this is more of a secondary gun if there was a, an extreme emergency 
that called for it. So when I'm looking at this build, the reason I built it was to have an ultra discreet, ultra compact rifle that I felt with the transit sling could blend in anywhere. And I do mean anywhere. I feel comfortable carrying this rifle virtually everywhere. So I hope you guys found that helpful. That's my five inch 300 blackout. This is a build that if you've been following my personal page, Keystone Carry for any amount of time, you have absolutely seen this in the past. Not a lot has changed because I like how I have it set up. It works, it's very reliable, very potent. And if you found it helpful, leave us a comment, subscribe to our channel, share this video with someone else who wants to build a 300 blackout or share it with one of your friends that doesn't think that five inch 300 blackouts can rip and you prove them wrong and tell them that I sent you. Guys, we appreciate you. We'll catch you in the next one.